Hey guys, my name is Mitsumio, and welcome to your episode of Monday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the formatties out of the way real quick, if you'd like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question today comes from Jack, and it is, how about making Jackal's tracking time depend on how fresh the footprints are? If he scans old footprints, he only gets two scans. That has to be one of the most creative ideas I've heard about changing Jackal. Over this last couple of weeks, I've been bombarded with suggestions on how Ubisoft should adjust this operator because he's constantly sidelined in ranked. He's constantly getting banned and people still want to play as him, but obviously they don't want to go against the way that he currently works right now. I've heard basically everything under the sun, but this is, this is the very first time I've heard this kind of idea. And so what I like about this idea so much is that it solves a couple of problems. The first big one is that when you're on defense roaming around, it's incredibly frustrating for a jackal to scan your footprints that were like 30 or 40 seconds old. You've been camping in a corner the entire time, but just simply because you move from point A to point B and he happened to come across your, your really old footprints, that just doesn't feel good. And so while he still can scan those old footprints, it's not going to be as advantageous as it was before. And this moves on over into the next point where it's actually now going to require Jackal, if he wants to get the full use out of his gadget, to actually use his gadget and track the person. This is one of the coolest aspects, I think, about this character that really gets underutilized, the tracking functionality. It moves from different uh, color gradients for how close you are to the actual defensive character. And so if you do see those blue footprints on the ground, you have a couple of options. You can either Either scan them to either let them know that you're aware of where they are. Now you kind of have a general idea of where they're located, but they're going to be able to situate and you're only going to get two scans off, or you can try to follow said footprints, get a bit closer so that they're yellow or maybe an orange so that maybe you can get like four scans off in that, in that kind of a circumstance. That would open up so much more possibilities and a little bit more dynamic between offense and defense. I love when I'm actually able to use the color gradients of those footsteps steps to my advantage when I play as Jackal, but because the game doesn't really reward me all that much for doing so, I think this would kind of elevate that to the next level, and so I just think it's an amazing idea. All in all, though, if you can't tell, I think that this is really creative. I have no idea if it actually would balance him out in the long run, but it would definitely be a step in the right direction. It alleviates a lot of the frustration that is just associated with this operator, but at the same time keeping the essence of what Jackal is all about. He is the detective, and that would still be maintained, and so hopefully this is something that actually I would really love for Ubisoft to consider in a future update. Before we move on to the next question, I just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder because time is running out. If you do want to get my Bing Bong charm in Rainbow Six Siege, uh, you only have like one or two more days to actually get it. it. It ends on July 23rd. And so if you would like to actually get this in game, all you have to do is subscribe to my Twitch channel and then link your Ubisoft and your Twitch account and then it should show up in your inventory. I'll leave a link down below in the description that goes over the F FAQ on how to actually go about it, but I just want to give you guys a heads up because time is running out. Now, as for the next question, what are your thoughts on the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely getting cautiously optimistic. From what we've seen so far, it looks still like COD, it's always going to be that, but they've slowed down the gameplay significantly and it's way less arcadey. From the little bit of gameplay that we've seen so far, which you guys are watching right now, their 2v2 mode looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I hear that there is semi-predictable recoils, you're going to be able to actually learn the way that these weapons perform, master them essentially. There is going to be more tactical elements into the gameplay itself. Some people are saying that this is going to be a lot like Rainbow Six Siege. I can kind of see it, but at the same time, I, I don't really buy it. Yes, they are trying to slow down and make it a bit more methodical and tactical, but Siege is so much more than that. And so while I definitely like the direction that they're going with it, if you're expecting this to be essentially Siege 2.0, you're probably going to be very disappointed. But if you do like what the Call of Duty franchise is all about, but you were kind of hoping for something a little bit different, that seems to be what they're trying to deliver here. Not only that, but graphically, this looks much more impressive. The Call of Duty franchise has never 
never really been known for its graphical fidelity, but the fact that they're finally updating their engine has been a long time coming, and it's great to see that it's finally here. The real question that I have is, though, is what is the netcode and what is the performance of this game going to be like? I hear that they're going to have much larger player counts on these maps, and that's maybe because of this updated engine, but is their netcode and is their infrastructure going to be able to sustain that? The one worry that I have is that with a brand new engine, if they haven't gotten all the kinks out, there could be some problems with server stability. There could be a lot of netcode related issues. The COD franchise has been at least relatively known for its snappy, responsive gameplay. And so I'm really hoping that they're going to be able to uh, nail that down with this new game. By and large, though, I am looking forward to this one. I'm not going to get overly excited because at the end of the day, this is Call of Duty. COD has been known to disappoint over the years. But if they're able to deliver a, a solid experience, a, a bit of a deviation from the normal formula that is a bit slower paced and provides some more tactical, methodical gameplay, I, I think that it's going to be phenomenal, but we are just going to have to wait and see. The next question comes from Joe, and it is, what do you think about a defender's gadget, a ladder that can be deployed on hatches? It must be deployed on the top of hatches to stop defenders getting on the roof. It can be used by either team and can be destroyed by an explosive or sledge. I think this would help more sites be viable and give defense more options for rotates. So we have definitely talked about a ladder or a rope system in previous Sunday mailboxes, but I believe, maybe I'm just misremembering entirely, but it's always been around the idea that it would be an offensive gadget and not a defensive one. One of the reasons why I always thought it would be kind of lackluster for the offensive team is because a lot of the times, there's not really going to be a lot of ways for you to be able to take advantage of it. If there is a hatch on the objective and you need to climb up a ladder, you are going to be incredibly vulnerable while you actually try to pull that off. Most defenders are not only going to be able to hear the hatch being op opened on up, but they're also going to see you scurry on up the ladder, and that's going to leave you incredibly vulnerable. But as a defender, though, that makes things a lot more interesting. Roaming around, as you guys know, is fairly risky sometimes, because as soon as they realize that you're roaming around and have a general idea of where you are, they're going to watch their back and watch the few couple of angles, especially if you're downstairs. There's only so many staircases. They're going to watch those sides for you to try to make your way back back onto the objective. As soon as a defender has a ladder though, now there's a lot more options. Now granted, the downside of this is as you mentioned in your question, this would be something that the offensive team would be able to take advantage of or just get rid of. And so if they drone it out or realize that it's there, either they can mosey on up and if no defender is nearby, now they're on the objective or they can just straight take it out and that defender that is now trying to rotate into that direction is going to be kind of left high and dry. All in all though, I would definitely not be surprised whatsoever if we did see an operator or a gadget like this introduced into the game. It's simplistic, but at the same time, would change up the maps and the way that you play them in a meaningful way. And in my opinion, that's the best way to introduce a new character. The next question comes from Archie and it is, I got a lion rework idea. Maybe instead of making a player stand still, it locates enemies who use gadgets or abilities. This would have a lot longer duration and and also I ID the enemy for a lot longer. Would stop Cav using her abilities, Pulse using his, and would stop people using Echo Drones or Maestro Cameras. Honestly, that sounds like it'd make him even more powerful than he is right now. Granted, being able to force people to stand still for a short period of time is incredibly advantageous. Like, don't get me wrong. That is the reason why I want to play as his character. But at the same time, forcing all Echoes, everyone who wants to view a camera like Valkyrie, no one like Pulse is going to be able to use their gadgets. All gadgets are useless, like you said, for a fair amount of time. That just seems incredibly powerful. Now granted, you're not stopping the player from actually using their gadgets, but if they do, it's going to ping their location. But if the Echo is in his drone and he's not moving, obviously, because he's in the cameras, uh, that's going to make it really easy for the offensive team. Not only because now they know where they are, but it can just take him out through the wall or quickly flank on in and take him out. The other reason why I'm not really sold on this idea is that I'm really hoping that Ubisoft moves away from either new operators or existing gadgets that they change where it really just is a click of the button and then everyone either on offense and defense is affected. Lion and Dokubi are prime examples. You literally just 
click a button and then something happens and they have to work around it. There's really no interaction between the two different sides. And so this would just be the epitome of that. Maybe they could have it where you would just simply throw a gadget in an area like a big EMP and then everyone in that location can't use their gadget or they, if they do, they'll be pinged like Lion. Uh, but even then, I don't really know if I'm completely on board. And so all in all, well, I see where you're coming from. It's definitely an interesting concept. I, I really don't know if this is something that I would want to see in Rainbow Six Siege, but obviously that is just my opinion. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is what it for today's episode of Monday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Do you like the idea of having a ladder operator introduced into the game? Why or why not? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until next time, guys, have a good one and take it easy. Bye.